Hey everybody, thank you for watching Leaf by Leaf. Today I want to start a new video series on the aphorism. It's a compressed form that I very much like. Uh, it's in the vein of the maxim, the proverb, the adage, the musing. The word comes from Hippocrates in his book of aphorisms. He's most known for the opening lines of his aphorisms, which in Latin, I won't uh, try to pronounce the Greek because I'll butcher it, but in Latin, it's vita brevis ars longa. Life is short, art is long. And for this video, I want to read from Rochefoucauld, his maxims and moral reflections. But first, let's start with another great aphorist, Nietzsche. In his Human All Too Human, in section 36, towards the end, he says, La Rochefoucauld and those other French masters of soul searching are like accurately aimed arrows which hit the mark again and again, the black mark of man's nature. And indeed, Rochefoucauld, he exposes human pride and hypocrisy and selfishness. He very much wants to hold up a mirror to that part of us which we would rather remain hidden. He's very cynical. For Rochefoucauld, the, the ends definitely do not justify the means. Sorry, Machiavelli. And so his outlook can be a little bit bleak, but he does have hope for greatness, or rather a belief that we can achieve greatness. What is particularly alluring for me with La Rochefoucauld and his aphorisms is his extraordinary economy of language. Um, so you know me as someone who loves big books and cannot lie. I love maximalist texts. The wordier, the better. Pleonasm, pleonasm, pleonasm. But when it comes to the compressed form, like the aphorism, the maxim, the, the more economy of language, the better. Rochefoucauld was born in 1613. He died in 1680. Uh, but in 1665, he published the first copy of his aphorisms and then a revised fifth edition in 1678. Passions are the only orators which always persuade. Philosophy triumphs easily over the ills of the past and the ills to come, but present ills triumph over her. Most men die because they cannot prevent themselves from dying. If we did not have any shortcomings, we would not enjoy noticing them so much in others. If we did not have pride, we would not complain of it in others. It takes one to know one. We make promises according to our hopes and keep them according to our fears. Everybody complains of his memory and nobody complains of his judgment. It is easier to be wise for others than for oneself. A man of wit would often be very embarrassed without the company of idiots. The glory of great men must always be measured against the means they used to acquire it. However dazzling an action may be, it should not pass for great when it is not the result of great design. Flattery is a counterfeit money given currency only by our vanity. Our repentance is not so much a regret of the evil we have done as a fear of what can befall us from it. We easily forget our faults when they are known only by ourselves. The desire to appear clever often prevents one from becoming so. Perfect valor is doing without witnesses what one would be capable of doing in front of everyone. I've also heard a variation of this that goes, integrity is what you do when no one is looking. There is hardly any man clever enough to know all the evil that he does. There are wicked people who would be less dangerous if they had no goodness at all. Enough people despise wealth, but few know how to give it away. Whatever good we are told about ourselves, we are not taught anything new. People have made a virtue of moderation in order to limit the ambition of great men and to console mediocre people for their limited fortune and their limited merit. Ouch. There is in jealousy more self-love than love. Take that to heart the next time you read Proust. We confess small shortcomings only in order to persuade ourselves that we do not have any great ones. Mediocre minds ordinarily condemn anything beyond their reach. Sounds like Aesop's fox. No people are more often wrong than those who cannot stand to be so. One can be smarter than someone else, but one cannot be smarter than everyone else. 
here is a really great example of the ultra com compressed form uh, that Rochefoucauld does so well um, and, and his sheer economy of language. Few people know how to be old. Nothing prevents one from being natural as much as the desire to appear to be so. There is no man who believes that each of his qualities is beneath the man he esteems most in the world. Our envy always lasts longer than the happiness of those we envy. Quarrels would not last long if the blame were only on one side.